About a month ago I got my first ever ghost mantis, and I made a video showing how I built her stand, as well as enclosures for two other mantises. I highly recommend you go watch that video before this one if you haven't already. In this next part I'll show how I made the backgrounds, as well as how I scaped and planted the setups. I'm starting off like usual with some XPS foam that I cut to size. I'll be making a background for each enclosure so I'll have to cut three. However, I won't be covering the sides like usual, so that makes things a lot easier. Once the foam was cut, I had three identical pieces. I then started to draw out my pattern. This ended up being useless as I was able to get the pattern that I wanted without having to draw anything. Once I realized that I didn't need the pattern anymore, I started to carve the foam with a wire brush drill bit. This works extremely well for carving detailed shapes and adding texture to foam. I've got a few more advanced techniques that I'm hoping to try out in the near future. Like I said earlier, I'll be creating three backgrounds, so I repeated this process on the other two pieces. After carving everything, I had three pieces of identical foam. Everything's looking a bit sharp at the moment, so I went over it with a bit of sandpaper. After that, I used a heat gun to harden the foam. This helps the foam keep its shape, as well as bring out all of the details. After thoroughly going over all three pieces, it's time to start painting. Like usual, I'll be using dry lock. I start with a thick dark gray coat, making sure to cover the entire piece. After that, I start using progressively lighter dry brush coats, two to be exact. Unlike the first coat, I'm only brushing this one on the surface, making sure not to get in all of the cracks. This technique creates an amazing looking rocky background. It's fairly cheap, simple, and effective. Anyways, I finished up the second dry brush coat and moved on to the third and final. This coat is not only the thinnest of them all, but it's also the lightest. I've used this technique for a bunch of different enclosures as some of you will know, as well as many different shapes, textures, and colors. As much as I like this technique, I have a few problems with it. One is that it can feel too flat when used in large pieces, and it lacks a variety of shapes and detail. Like I said, I have another more advanced technique that I want to try that will hopefully fix all of those issues. Anyway, I went on to finish the final coat. Now that the final coat is applied and the backgrounds are finished, it's time to attach them to the tanks. However, before we can do that, I need to adjust the sides. For that, I'll use some frosted window film. Like I said, I didn't make backgrounds for the sides, so this will be a great alternative. It looks great and is very easy to apply. After covering both sides of all three enclosures, I can finally attach the backgrounds. I started by wiping down the back with isopropyl alcohol and then applying a generous layer of 100% silicone. After that, I put the backgrounds in the enclosures and firmly pressed them into place. I repeated this process with the other two enclosures. After attaching all three backgrounds and leaving them for 24 hours to dry, here's the final result. I absolutely love it. Next thing we need to address is the false bottom. For that, I have some Leica. This stuff works great as it's fairly inexpensive and will help absorb some water. I added a layer to each enclosure that's about an inch deep. After that, I cut three pieces of mesh to size and put them in the enclosure. I made it a bit bigger than the bottom of the enclosure so that it'll curl up on the sides and the substrate won't fall through to the false bottom. I then repeated the process two more times. After that, I added a few handfuls of charcoal to each enclosure. This will help to keep mold away. I didn't show it, but I also added a culture of springtails. With the charcoal added, I can finally mix up a custom ABG mix made of one part cocoa fiber, one part sand, one part reptile bark, and two parts sphagnum moss. I've used this mix plenty of times in the past, and I've had great results with it. I added a good amount to each enclosure, making sure to slope it up towards the back to create depth. I ended up having to mix up some more, as I didn't have enough in the initial batch. Now that I have all the tanks filled up with substrate, it's time to start hardscaping. For that, I have three pieces of Amazon wood. I added each piece to the right side of the enclosure. As you'll see now and later when we get into planting, I'm keeping things fairly simple. I also had to use a bit of super glue and painting tape to keep things in place. Now that all three enclosures have been scaped, I can finally start planting. I'll start by removing the soil on the roots of all the plants. I'll then use water to remove any excess soil so that the roots are clean. Now that everything's prepped, it's time to start planting. Like I said, I'm keeping things fairly simple with this, starting with a fern in the back right corner of the first enclosure. I'll then add a variety of smaller plants towards the base of the wood. I picked plants that will create a wide variety in color and texture. 
I'm very happy with the plants that I picked out, however, unfortunately some of them didn't make it, as you'll see later in the video. I ended up replacing them with plants that I honestly like even more. After getting the first enclosure completely planted, I started to repeat the process with the other two enclosures. I followed a similar process as I did for the first enclosure, keeping a big plant in the back and then smaller plants towards the base of the wood. However, you'll notice with the middle one that I added an orchid. I haven't got the other two mantises yet, but I'm definitely getting an orchid mantis, so that's why I added one. Not sure what the third one I'll get is though, let me know if you have any ideas down in the comments. Now it's time to add the final details, starting with some air plants. All I did was super glue these in place. I added two of these to each enclosure. Once I had all the air plants in place, I started to add leaf litter. I add leaf litter to almost any enclosure that I can, as it makes it feel more natural, and in my opinion, makes it look better. It also creates great hiding spots for springtails and isopods. I then went on to add botanicals. These will help to bring the look full circle and make things look even more natural. I then gave everything a spray down, and that completed the build. And with that, the mantis project is now complete. Well, kinda. I still have space for three more enclosures on the bottom of the rack. I probably won't make any more for a little while though. For now, I'll just enjoy the enclosures I have, which I think turned out amazing. What do you think? I really love the contrast and color of these enclosures. From the gray of the background to the green of the plants, all the way down to the brown of the leaf litter, everything looks amazing. My personal favorite is the one in the middle with the orchid. I'm curious to know though, which one's your favorite? In my opinion, this is one of the best projects I've worked on in a while, maybe even ever. I just can't get enough of the colors. Anyways, that's gonna do it. I hope you all enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya.